Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and tonight we're going to be talking all about web design. We're going to be talking a lot about our theories behind web design, some of the philosophies we have, and we're going to be giving you guys a sneak peek at the brand new beta test of the brand new Google Sites. We have our co-host today, Miss Jennifer Judkins. Jen, how are you today? How are things up there in New Hampshire? Excellent. We're having a week at the beach and uh, hoping for some sunshine tomorrow. That is fantastic. I know I just got done last week having two Google boot camps. I did one full day for administrators, did one full day for secretaries, and I'm looking forward to doing three more for my school district here uh, starting next week and moving through August. There's a lot of great things happening. I am excited today to talk a little bit about websites, talk a little bit about the new Google sites. Um, you are currently thinking about or you're currently working on a web project for yourself, aren't you, Jen? I am. I'm actually working on two different websites right now. I'm designing one for a nonprofit here in our area that does professional development for teachers. And I am also working on my own Teaching Forward website, redesigning that, just giving it a fresh new look. So when you're looking at making that fresh new look, let me bring up your site here. Tell us a little bit about what this current site is. Uh, what's it made out of? How'd you build it? Where are you hosting it and stuff like that? And then let's kind of get into some, some web philosophies here. Tell us a little bit about what teachingforward.net is. So my site was um, created on a EduBlogs platform, which is essentially a WordPress um, type of format. And I designed it first with the intention of just having a place to collect and store all of the different tutorial videos and um, tutorial handouts that I was making and also as a place for me to put regular articles that were reflections of things that I was doing in the classroom or new technology tools that I had discovered. So um, it's as much for my, you know, my own personal sort of cataloging of information, but then I find that I use it quite a bit as I'm working with teachers to be able to just send them a link to a post that I might have done. Um, and then I get a, you know, fairly decent amount of traffic in through the site um, on a daily basis for from all over the country, all over the world, really, people that are looking for resources for their classroom. Well, I certainly know that teachingforward.net has a lot of great resources. I know I take from it a lot because everything on there is absolutely golden. You've got great Google resources. You've got great PDFs. You've got slides. You've got stuff for, to help trainers like myself. You've got a lot of neat things. I have a couple of questions. I want to start with the basics here on like, what do you look for when you're picking a theme? Or what did you look for when you picked this theme? How did this theme here fit your, your motive for creating this website? I tend to like a more minimal site. I don't like sites with lots of pop-ups. I like, I prefer sites that um, have a really clean look to them and will be easy to navigate. So when people come to a site, um, I don't like, I, I don't want them to see lots of menu choices. I like the menus to be very clear and for um, it to be fairly intuitive for, for anyone to be able to go to a site and, and figure out where the information might be that they're looking for, but also have a search available on the sidebar so that they can conduct a search for what they're looking for to speed things along. And I think that's important that you had mentioned navigation. I'm always looking for how does somebody find the work that we have, especially when you have a site that's extensive like TeacherCast or Teaching Forward. There's a lot of stuff in there. How do you make sure that you're not burying your content? What advice do you have when it comes to creating that navigation? Um, I think for me, I actually mock it up on paper first, and I really just start to think about what are the categories that the content that I have would fit into. And I do this for any website that I design. Um, I think about what are sort of the big ideas that, that the website is, um, you know, trying to help facilitate. And then within those big idea categories, are there subcategories that naturally fit within them? Um, some people have very deep navigation where, you know, there are multiple levels of drop downs. I try to keep navigation to no more than two levels, the main navigation level, and then maybe one more below it. Um, I think it can be difficult depending on how much content you have, but um, in the sites that I typically have designed and worked on, 
there, you know, you can spread it out between um, tabs. I also like to make sure that the navigation fits very cleanly across the page at left to right so that it, um, you know, you don't have so many categories that they're spilling off the side of the page. I certainly think that's important here, you know, especially when we're making a site that has a lot of content here. You know, just as an example, I want to pull up a couple things just for just to show us here. Um, you know, when we created a site like TeacherCast, um, there's a lot of content there. We got podcasts, we got blogs, we got workshops, we have all these things that are going on here. And I certainly wanted to make sure that people can find what it is. Let me uh, pull it up here. So, you know, we created this little system here where we have a menu on top where it's like the big things. And then underneath here, we have more of the personal stuff, you know, uh, you know about my speaking, about the website, um, links that you can subscribe and get our apps and stuff. So certainly looking at that navigation is important to you. Now, are you looking at something that is just going to be focusing more on content or media based? So uh, unlike the TeacherCast website that's very media rich, my site is probably more content based and um, articles and then there may be media embedded into the articles. Like if I'm doing a blog post and I've done a tutorial video that will be embedded right into the post. I tend to try to keep things together like that. And that makes it easier when I'm sharing with teachers that I can send them a link to a blog post that might contain a printable handout that describes how to do something as well as maybe a tutorial video that that also is showing something in a different way because you know every teacher learns differently and some teachers prefer a step-by-step -step sheet of paper they can print out and have and other teachers like to see it um, in video format so I, I try to keep those all together in in individual posts. So one of the things that I'm excited for here is that today we're going to be unveiling the brand new Google Sites. And I think it's important as a, as a tech coach, but also as somebody who's making websites. And, and you know, you said it before you kind of dive into this plan out where things are. I know you had just said that when you were planning on navigation, you wrote it down. And I do the same exact thing. In fact, I recently got finished um, helping out my local family community center build their website and up on their marker board, we literally took like 100 post-its and just started to you know map out the navigation for what their site was going to be. I think it saves time. Um, you know, I'm I'm a big believer that when you're going digital, that doesn't necessarily mean having to go paperless. There's a lot of things that you can do there on paper um, to, to make things easy for you. And then I always play the game, you know, can you find it? Can you share with it? Um, can I do a little show and tell here? Do you mind, Jen? Yeah, go right ahead. Um, we're doing a few things here. I, just, I didn't want to start off the show with this, but, but you know, I kind of wanted to mention this as we're going here this show is being recorded sunday night july 10th and for anybody who uh might have been following recently knows that on july 11th tomorrow morning at 1 a.m um i'm actually selling celebrating my five-year anniversary of teacher cast uh, five years ago i couldn't sleep at night and this apple logo kind of popped into my head and that was literally the start of where we are and how we got here today and um in august uh or well, i should say back in april i keep messing up those months back in april we decided to redesign teacher cast in in its new and current form i'll pull that up again here um had a lot of great feedback from here you know again we had talked a little bit about the philosophies and theories behind it everything here was designed for ease of access and everything was designed here to help teachers get in get what they need and most importantly get out quickly with things so i took all of this philosophy recently um this weekend i should say and basically poured it into an anniversary present for myself where actually we created a brand new site for my personal business so uh for those of you out there playing the home game this is the official launching party of the brand new jeffreybradbury.com and if you guys are watching out there, you can certainly look through here. But I kind of wanted to take a walk. And, and, you know, Jen, you're the first person seeing this. I'm sure you can pull it up on your screen here. But um, I'm excited about this. I probably have slept about three hours total since Thursday night because I just started 
digging in and building this thing. But I really wanted to kind of harness the power of everything that's been going on over the last five years. Um, worked a lot with this featured image, this hero image here, to try to get the point across of all the things that have been happening over the last five years. We, of course, at the bottom here, emphasizing our social media. And, you know, when I was building this over the last couple of days, I really had about 15 or 20 different websites in front of me, everywhere from bloggers to WordPress people to companies to featured speakers that we know in the education world and really came up with a design, which I think looks nice, although at the moment I'm still working through a few bugs and things like that. Um but I wanted to come up with something that was basically going to say, look, I'm, you know, we're more than just teacher cast here. We have some great things. I kind of like this testimonials uh, section down here where we can click on people's faces and their testimonials change. I like the idea here that you can click and subscribe to all of my stuff. But really, this is going to be a, a new home for Jeff and a new home for all the workshops and presentations that I'm doing. I'll show you. I just put this one up here before the show started. Um, one of these shows that I, I've done here in the past and also one of the workshops I'm doing soon for uh, EdTech team this week. I've got a Google Summit to go to, but my creative ways of using Google Slides. Um, really using the same theme from TeacherCast, we were able to really dive into what a post or a page looks like and really make dynamic content. So you can see here I've got all the slides for this particular presentation in SlideShare. I have all the links of interest. I even have a QR code, so that way that could be one of the first things that I be I will show, I will show people when I'm doing all my workshops if they want to find it on their phone. And then down here I have videos for the various times that I've done this, whether it be a workshop or I did this at ISTE. And then here's the short code, and then I basically gave a little overview and a summary of where this is. So you can see where I'm going with this. I have a lot of work to do. I think I'm going to be adding an online store onto here. Um, but I don't know. I, I've been having fun with this, and this all comes down to, you know, what have you learned over the last couple of years, and how have you designed it to fit you? Um, Jenna, you, you create websites for yourself and you also create websites for your school district and you also create websites for organizations. I'm curious mm -hmm. to ask, do you take the same philosophies when you're building each of those or a website's a website's a website or are you completely going in different directions based off of the client? Um, I, there are some things that I hold true to kind of the navigation type of philosophy that we talked about and the importance of making sure information can be found intuitively without um, a lot of difficulty from people visiting the site. But um, the platforms, for example, I, I'm all over the map of different platforms because that really depends on who is ultimately maintaining the website. So a lot of times I'm involved in getting a website up and running, but there might be different people that are actually editing the content over time. And there may even be situations where there are multiple editors or editors in different parts of the site. And so those are the types of things that I, I ask about and that um, drive my decision, what kinds of resources people have available to them when they're, uh, you know, maintaining the site over time, what's that going to look like? Because uh, oftentimes, I'm just involved in the initial development of the site, creating um, something for them from scratch. And then then um, we have a number of different people possibly maintaining the site over time and wanting to make sure that that piece, the editing portion of the site and the ability to maintain it over time is is seamless for those people. So, Jen, I know we have a lot of stuff to do today, especially when we're looking at philosophies. And one of the things that I notice is that teachers have different philosophies when designing their website. Now, in the past, we had a lot of options that were not the most easiest to use. But recently, Google announced and is now launching in beta um, a brand new Google Sites You've been one of the fortunate ones to actually get a chance to play with this. Before we get into our screencasting part, what do you think of the new Google Sites? I love it. Um, it's it's in its infancy, so I um, 
you know, not everything is there yet, but I'm really patient with that because I know when I think about all the other types of things that Google rolls out, you know, they just have a tendency to release things as soon as they're sort of usable, knowing that they're going to constantly be evolving and developing. So there are some things that are clearly missing, um, but I know that they're on their way. So I'm not impatient about that. Um, I think that the thing that is huge for me is that it's so seamless. When when I had um, used the previous version of Google Sites, sort of the classic version of Sites, it's, it's not super intuitive and there's not, um, it's not easy to get a teacher to make their own class website, for example. And I think it's very frustrating for teachers. You know, they can sit with someone like me, another tech coach to walk them through how to make the site, but then when they have to change like their, their site navigation or add new pages or do anything on the site, they find it's really difficult. So um, the new sites is very intuitive and really responsive. So it works well on any type of screen. So that's a big deal that, that you are really comfortable knowing and, and actually can even preview what the site looks like in any format. So these days with so many people, so many users looking at sites on mobile devices or tablets, it's nice to know that um, that the site looks fantastic and, and exactly what it's going to look like when you're on um, on different screens. It allows you to preview the site in those different screens and has a fantastic drag and drop interface, with really user friendly kind of weebly like in a way. Well, let's take a look at that. I'm going to pull up here the, and we're just going to call it old and new. Is that is that the right way of doing it? I don't. And we can call it current if we a want. Cla but. I'm calling it classic, classic and new. Got it. I understand. <laughs> so here is classic Google Sites. Now this is sites.google.com, and you can see here that it's very very uh, minimalistic to use one of your words and classic. And so we, you know we don't have very much. It's not visual. Um, I know when working with the younger kids, they're, they're, they don't know what to do here because there's not much. If I flip over here to the new Google Sites, you can see here that they're keeping the same uh, newness that our Google Drive and Google Docs. And, and you know this is the new theme that is it's getting a, a coat of paint on all the different Google apps here. One of the things that I notice here is that if I drop down the menu, this is actually making a site inside of Google Drive. Is that the way of looking at this now? Right, right. So it, it just becomes, you know, Google Drive is the hub for everything that you're creating. And just as you can drop down and, and choose new doc or slides, now sites is available if you're on the, if you're one of the new, uh, one of the districts that has applied for and received um the ability to create new Google sites. So right now it's a beta program. And uh, perhaps we can share the link, Jeff, uh, in our show notes, because we do have that yep. on how people would apply for that. It has to be done through the domain administrator. Um, but the nice thing is when people do apply for it and they get the ability to make new Google, Google sites, it doesn't remove their ability to create and use and work within the classic sites. Well, so. let's, let's talk about that. Cause th there's a cu couple questions here from our live audience here. Um, our old sites, it doesn't seem like Google wants us to be importing things, but they are giving us the ability to import things. I mean, and, I, and by doing that, just to get a little nerdy here, they completely start it from scratch. This isn't an upgrade to Google sites. This is the next brand new version. So they're, yeah, they're, they, 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 they ground, really want the you to... Up. Yeah, they really want you to start from nothing and build up because they're they're yeah. built on different things. And I also understand that if you have classic Google sites, they once this goes alpha, there'll be some kind of announcement where they'll give you 12 months to essentially move it or be moved yourself. Uh, are you here? Is that what you're hearing, too? Yeah. So the the uh, I've read some information on blog posts that are published from uh, Google for work and they're indicating that the classic version of sites will be functional for at least a year. So, um, and I would think that that means not just a year from now, but a year from when this new sites 
um, is really fully online because right now it's just in this early adopter program phase. Um, and there's a and lot of things what, that are coming out every week, it seems. Like they just keep adding and adding and adding as they build this thing. Exactly. Yep. And I think this is what we have seen with things like Classroom, where you get something that's sort of totally new because, again, this is not an improvement of sites. It is a complete redesign from the ground up. So this is a completely new interface. And so um, I, I can't imagine that they're not going to have features that are that are there in the classic version of sites. I think in some cases, it's just a matter of time as they roll those out. Google just has always had a philosophy of releasing things early and updating often. And so um, those of us that are, are frequent users of Google Apps, we sort of have grown accustomed to this. This is just the way they do things. And I'm fine with that. Um, but I think that what's interesting is I did note that what they said was that the classic version of sites will remain functional, but they said in the future, they will provide options for moving content from classic sites to the new sites. And I was kind of intrigued seeing the words moving content as opposed to converting the format over, you know what I mean? So that yes. indicates to me that that it's not gonna be you click a button and your site is now a new site. I think there's going to have to be I think some sort of like movement of content as opposed to well, you flip a switch and you're in the new site, but I, we'll have to see what that looks like. I think you're going to have two things here. I think you're going to have a lot of angry teachers when they find out that they have to suddenly do something in the world. But then I think <laughs> you're going to have to find a lot of happy teachers because they can suddenly do this. I, I want to give you guys – I want to give you time to, to do a good demo of this because I, I love the stuff that you're working on. I want to showcase two quick features here that are – completely brand new and the first one over here says owned by anyone which is really neat that you can actually differentiate this is one of those issues that that students had was the, it, all the google sites that you have whether i was the owner you were the owner were all in this 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 row and you really couldn't see anything here other than you know at the bottom here but the other thing i like here is once you have a site and maybe you can show us because you have a few sites built you can delete your sites right from this dashboard area whereas before you have to go into your menu your theme settings go to the bottom then hit the delete button um but enough about that jen why don't you do a screen share here and why don't you give us a quick demo of, of all of this? You know, take us through the, from the first time you see this to, you know, to building some wonderful things. Because there really are a lot of great potential and a lot of great possibilities here. Yeah. So, um, Jeff, just making sure that you can see my screen. I can see your screen. Perfect. So just as you said, right from the, new, from the menu here where you would say new to find to create a new file, under more, uh, Google Sites is now a choice. And for people that don't see that as a choice, that just indicates that their Google um, admin has not yet applied for this early adopter program. So um, it took a few days, I wanna say maybe up to a week um, to get approved. And it was a little confusing at first because it sounded like it might be limited to Google Apps for work customers, but it in fact is available for Google Apps for education customers as well. And again, turning this off is uh, turning this on uh, is risk free because it does not do anything to interfere with existing sites that were built on the classic platform. Those are still available if you navigate to sites using the that menu that you typically that that waffle apps launcher menu, or if you just navigate to sites.google.com, you would you would see all of your classic sites. So I'm going to just rather than. Uh, show an existing site. I'm going to just create one from scratch so people can see how simple it is. Um, and then I can always flip over to some other ones that I've made or been working on. But um, when you first get into sites, you have your, your workspace on the left, which takes up the majority of your screen, and your toolbox is arranged on the right. Um, there are three major categories that are in your toolbox. There's an insert menu, pages menu and a themes menu. So these are right here on the left. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, on the right. And so if I title my site, and as soon as I title my site, it appears in the top corner of my web page. And 
the page title here would be the title for the, you know, this would be like my home page, or I could call this by my class. Now the themes would be typically the first thing that people change. It's very limited right now. There are only three theme styles, and then there are different color options available for those themes. So I'm just gonna toggle between them right now. I'm sure that this will increase over time and probably not take very long before there are lots of different options. So um, you can, the, the font style is very limited. You can, you choose the font style and there's only a few options available. But again, what I really love about it, and this is what I wanna show you is, is how it adjusts everything for you so that you don't have to be a, a website guru to figure out how to quickly make a great class website. So I have this, um, this header at the top and it has a standard image behind, but I do have the ability to change the image here. And I can change the image by kind of like Google Classroom, there are available images that I can pick from, or I could upload my own image. You'll notice on the menu at the top here that I can upload an image or I can add an image by URL or do a search for an image. So um, I have not been able to figure out, they, they don't have a clear indication of what the exact um, image dimensions are that are recommended, but I assume that that will kind of come out at some point soon as people start adjusting uh, and, and using it. So this is what's interesting is there's, there's this little, um, readability adjustment thing happening over on the corner. And the readability adjustment is something that um, is new for sites where, especially when you're working with images, sometimes they're not optimized to fit the screen. And so it seems to work to adjust the images so that they will work, as I said, in all those different formats that we mentioned, whether you're viewing on a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer. So this is the header here. And then if you're, um, if you're adding content, you'll notice on this right-hand side menu, I have choices of text box, image, embed URL, and upload. So I'm just gonna hit a text box first. And if I were creating a class website, I might, my first, um, I might wanna make this a title or a heading. So these are my different choices. So rather than having font sizes available, they simply have a style of text. So normal title, heading and subheading. And I find that this is actually really helpful because again, teachers sometimes have trouble picking a font size and then knowing what, how that will translate looking on, um, on different devices. And it also will color the font differently if you choose uh, anything besides um, you know, normal text if you choose a heading or subheading. So once we uh, add in the, the first, let me just switch back here. So once I add in the, um, the header, I can add in normal text here. Um, So once we, uh, when you're when you're adding text, what's interesting is I'm going to add an image so you can see how this works. This was a real challenge for teachers in the past. Um, in the past, when people were looking for adding, when they were adding images, it would really mess up what things looked like. So I'm going to just add an image here. Now it pops it to the bottom, but I can drag my image, and you'll notice that it's a little faint, so you may not be able to see it on the screen share, but there. There's a grid that appears very faintly behind um, that's showing me like uh, my different places where I can add this image. So if I wanna drag it over on this side and it, it just, um, when you do that, it adjusts the image to fit and it wraps the text. So I don't have to change the setting on the image as you might've had to do in the past about wrapping the text. Um, and I can also, if I wanted to move my text box, I can just, there, you can just drag these things into a new position. So it's a drag and drop interface. So very much like, like a Weebly format and, you know, things like that, that teachers 
tend to gravitate towards because they're really simple. You might have seen that when I click on the image, I can adjust the size of the image and I can also crop the image inside of Google Sites, just like you um, can do in Google Docs. So I can change my image. I can crop my image. It's a little bit of a different interface than it was in Google Docs, but it still functions the same way. I can double click and get back to the original image and change it if I want. You can also link your image. This is one thing that um, you could do before, but it was a little challenging. So if I wanted, um, if I'm gonna grab this link and I want to link this image. Now, if someone were to click on this image, it would, it would take them to that website that the image is attached to. Um, you can link text and this actually this is something that just got added because the other day I was only able to link to other pages within my website, not externally. So they've just made this update in the last couple of days. So there's a color palette that appears on the left hand side every time you add a, add a section. So, so what will happen is everything is kind of clumped into sections here. So this is one little section and there's a color palette that appears and I can change the emphasis on the section. So I'll show you this when I add another section. So I'm going to add some new text and I'm going to call this homework. And I'm going to add another text box. And what will happen is if you have different sections, sometimes it can be hard for people visually to see the difference between sections. So you can change this emphasis and that will highlight the background of the section, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's what that little color palette is on the on the left hand side. You can also put an image behind a section if you wanted. And you'll notice there's also the ability to, in addition to adding images and text box, there's embed URLs. So maybe I wanted to add a video. So let me grab the embed code from a video, for example. And I've noticed with the embed URL because, and they had noticed, they had made, made a mention of this before. Actually, I don't even need the embed code for YouTube. I can just grab the video link, I believe. Let me try this. And so it's giving me a preview so I can see what I'm adding. And so now the video is embedded and I can move it around on the page, just like anything, any other object, and I can resize it. So it's just really simple, just drag and drop. Adding pages is really easy. So uh, by the way, the you'll notice that in addition to the main adding of images and text box and embed URLs, um, I can add content from Drive. I can add things like I can embed a calendar. I can add a map. Um, I can add docs and I can also upload content into the site. Now, Jen, there's a share button up there next to that publish, right? Right. So the share button is, um, you know, the big thing about Google Sites that's really unique compared to other websites is that um, sharing is very simple and you can have um, collaborators. So this share button is for people that might be editing the site with you. So right now, only I can edit it, but I could add other people. Now, with the classic Google Sites, I believe it was set up so that way if you were editing a page, I could edit the site, but I couldn't edit that particular page. Have you tried this with somebody else um, to see what the, uh, what the updates are? I have not, but it's going right to you. So we could see. Um, I have not tried to edit simultaneously, but you're right, that has been a problem in the past. I'm not sure if they've changed that. Um, adding additional pages is really simple. So right now I have just a single page, but on this right hand menu, I can choose pages and I just hit this plus to do a new page. Um, when I add a new page, 
it, it automatically puts the navigation up here for me. I can change the navigation on the left hand side. I can do either top navigation or side navigation. The side navigation is going to just have it on the lines here where it's hidden. So I have to just tap those much like people are used to seeing on a mobile device. So adding pages is really simple. It keeps the, the same theme and but you could change the image for each page. Um, I'm just going to add a couple of pages because I want to show you how easy it is to move pages. So right now I have a home page. I'm going to switch my to, to top navigation. I like that a little better. Um, and I can rearrange the pages. So on the right hand side, I can just drag them into position and reorder them. And not only is it easy to move them, but it actually will change the navigation right away which was very difficult to do in the classic version of sites. It was multiple levels deep to even find it. And um, I can also nest one page under another. So if I wanted extra help, for example, to go under study resources, I just kind of position it over there, over top of it. And then you'll notice this symbol is showing me that it's nested underneath. And if I were to mouse over my study resources, I would see extra help as a choice. Um, so right now my site is not published, but I can publish my site. Yeah, you have you have an eyeball there, right? But that doesn't mean live to the world. Right. So this is the preview pane, and this lets me see what it would look like to people. What I really like about this is that in the new sites, it lets me toggle between a mobile device, what it would look like, a tablet, and a computer monitor. So for example, the mobile device shows me that even though on a computer monitor, I have a top uh, menu for navigation on a mobile device, I have this uh, sidebar navigation and I can even interact with this so I can click and, and see what all the pages look like. So it allows me to interact with, the, with what this looks like on each of these templates, um, each of these formats and I can exit out of there. But until I hit publish, this isn't available to anyone yet. Right now it's just in draft mode. So we have a couple of questions here because our, our chat box is kind of picked up. Um, okay. With sharing, okay, I get it. We're in beta. You can only use it if your super admin has requested, but I guess right there is my answer. You've shared it with my TeacherCast at account, which clearly that's not a school account. So mm -hmm. you can share this with anybody, even if that person doesn't have access to creating it themselves. Were you able to open it okay, Jeff? When, had you had a chance to try to open it? It didn't tell me anything, but I, I hadn't actually tried to share with anyone that didn't already have permission. So I'm wondering. I, I can try that. Uh, I've been okay. kind of working the, the, the chat box here. Yep. So yep. I haven't done that. The other question, and, and maybe you covered this when I was focusing on the chat box here, with classic Google Sites, when you create a page, you had, what was it, blog and archive. And, and right. do you have that? I mean, the neat part about that is that you could actually create a blog on a Google Site. Does that seem to be available here? Or I, I hope that, that that's a feature coming where, you know, a teacher could have multiple people blogging on their Google Site. And that, of course, so might bring up another question. Right. So again, this is a really um, minimal version. I would really be surprised if we would lose functionality. I think what we're going to see is a, a period of time where we're going to have fewer um, fewer options on, on this new format, which is what I'm seeing right now. For example, there are not page level permissions set up yet. That's a very big deal with Google Sites that individual pages could be shared with different permission. Like sometimes people could view all of the pages except for one um, and that was hidden from view or only certain users could view that page. So um, that I, I expect will be added, but it's not available right now. So another... right now the permissions are for the entire site. And, and what you mentioned about the different formats of pages, um, the file cabinet page and the the blog page, those are not available right now. It's just a standard page with these different elements that are available. I also, um, for example, like one of the things that I use a lot whenever I do a Google site is the um, that add-on for um, for Google Sheets, which is um, awesome tables. 
Now, before that was called a gadget, right? There's an add-on with Google Sheets that allows you to to toggle between different menus. I, you know, kind of basically puts a Google Sheet on a site, but it lets you filter the views of that sheet. But but so are they, that are, works, but they've done like a workaround where they use like a like a embed URL. Ah, oh, so there so, are no add-ons available at this point. Okay. But I I suspect that will change. That makes sense. All right, so so the pages. Uh, so again, the pages can be added. You can drag and drop to rearrange them. Um, you can write, you know, click on the three lines to rename a page. And my suspect, I, I'm suspecting that this is exactly these three dots here next to each page is where you would probably see the permissions being added at some point that can be adjusted, but. What I love about this is within minutes, um, oh, and site analytics, which is really interesting, um, you can attach a Google Analytics tracking ID to connect your site, so that's available. Um, and they are taking feedback, so every time I've been using this, I've been messaging them, and every day I'm seeing things tweaked and adjusted. Um, so it's your so fault. So it's really important to send feedback because they really are, this is exactly why they want these early adopters kicking the tires and, and letting them know what's working and what's not. So um, I, I've sent them multiple messages and I'm sure many, many people are as well, but it seems like it's been improving every time I go back to it, I'm seeing more things available. I got to tell you, I think it looks fantastic for where it is. I mean, I've asked you this question before and nobody has the answer of will this be live by September or mm -hmm. is this going to be a slow burn? You know, Gmail was technically in beta for 10 years, but I don't right. see this being that kind of a case. But what what do you think after speaking to uh, many Google people and, and your, your associations here? Is this going to be a September rollout? Um, which if it is, we have like five weeks to make this thing happen. Or do you see this being midway through the year? I really don't know. I mean, I think that you know, they, they launched a number there, you know, they have a number of brand new things coming out for the start of the school year. I think they're certainly very focused on the classroom updates that they've promised that are going to be there for the start of the school year, which includes the ability for parents to receive updates um, via email about what's happening in classrooms. So I think they know, for example, that that type of update really has to be ready for fall. Um, sites is something that's used not just by teachers, but by a huge range of users. So I don't know that there's any sort of um, magic behind the idea of a fall launch. Um, they tend to be pretty quick rolling things out, but I have not yet seen, you know, they have a calendar where they publish um, when they're when they're doing updates and I don't see anything there, but that doesn't mean it won't appear on the calendar as things get closer. So, Jen, we have a, uh, a challenge for you here coming from the audience. Yeah. Um, while you're there, could you switch over to something like a Symbaloo or a live binder. We just want to see if the if it's full embedding. I, I have a hunch that it is because as long as it accepts iframes, it should accept anything. However, um, I've been proven wrong on that with different ed tech companies. So um, show us how easy it is to embed some of these uh, third party ed tech tools. Yeah, and I, I've noticed that um, it seems like it depends on the um, the exact website. So for example, like I'm going to go to Newzella, right? So Newzella is a great website for finding nonfiction content for your students that can actually be leveled for different reading levels. So if you haven't used Newzella before, it's fantastic. So I, what I've noticed is there, you can embed a link, right? So if I grab a link and I go into the website, Maybe this is a resource I want my kids to look at. And then I click this embed URL. I'm putting this URL in and it will preview it for me. So this is actually not the same thing as an iframe embed right here. 
they do not yet have. So see how this is an embed URL on the top right? Hmm. I have not seen an iframe embed yet. So what I've been do what I'm doing, if you notice just then, is I'm actually just putting in the URL. So for example, with Symbaloo, if there was a specific page, uh, let's see. So I can just search, right? Um, so at the moment, it's not iframe compatible, but there are some O embeds. Right. So like if I grab this, oh, so how do I grab it? I don't use symbol. You had to ask me that. Let's see. So, cause aren't there links to like symbol pages? That's how you get to them. There are links. So I would think that I could just do a search for a web page. Um, let me just see if I can just get one to come up. So K to five math links. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna hit embed URL. And I've noticed sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So when it doesn't, so see how it doesn't give me a preview right now? Yes. So instead what's gonna happen is, and I'll go to the preview so you can see, what it does instead is it, it just puts the link in there so that it's going to the site and that's going to go to the math site. So I've noticed with, and they actually have said this, that that's something they're working on that not all sites are embedding properly. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually would expect that they would put an iframe in there because with iframe, you know, you can adjust like the size of the content. Right. They, they and have all of to. That. Yeah. Yeah. So right now what it's limited to is if you have a site that, um, that you want to like, um, that you want to put in there. If you just put in the link, it will preview that site. So it seems to depend on the site. So if I click on an article, like a blog post that I did, like I don't, I haven't tried this yet. I don't know if this will work, but um, it seems like some sites it will do the, uh, it will do a preview and embed that preview and other sites it doesn't. So it seems a little, sensitive right now so that one worked um it will do it will put the the um what do they call that the featured image will go there in a little small mm -hmm. excerpt um and again you can adjust the size now and on, you can move it around on the left there's a little uh paint easel is that just to change the color of that row? so the paint yeah so the paint easel like i said the, that each sort of there's like these sections so you'll notice that this is sort of like a section on my page and then this is another section. Um, and these different sections I can emphasize. So see how this has a blue background up here? So maybe every other section I want to have this blue background so it's a little easier for people to differentiate where my pages change. And do you know how difficult that is to do in WordPress? It is, it's, I mean, I'm just looking at this going, that's, that's so, so easy. So easy. This is so easy. Does, yeah, this, and does this replace WordPress? Well, you know, it's funny because I actually, um, I'm doing a, a site for a customer on this and I'm doing it on here because honestly, I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could do it, but I, I've really been impressed. I mean, it, it's just so easy to get it to look good. So, you know, you've got this, you can justify, I mean, it's just so intuitive. Teachers are going to love this. Like, look at this. I, I can do, um, I can do lists. I can do numbered lists. Can you show me how to put a calendar in? I know I, I see the button, but I, I actually yes. haven't seen what calendars look like. And that sure. I'm mostly looking at the integration between classroom insights. Yep. So when I hit calendar, this will be great because see, these are actually Google classroom calendars right here. Uh -huh. So I'll grab this one here. And so I'm going to have to go back because <laughs> we're in summer. But but I can see how easy that is, right? Like I yeah. It it so it it's a basic Google calendarism, and then I see that you can change it from there. There is a gear, right? When you click on that, there was a, a little gear in the middle there. What what kind of options? Okay. Yeah. So, so you, it looks like I have the ability for the view can change. So I like that I can set the view, and I can do the navigation buttons. So yeah. So I mean I. You could do this before, but it was not so easy. You had to 
you know, it was many more steps and not near, not nearly this easy. And, and again, you can, I could drag this around. I could reposition where this is. I can preview it to see how I like how it now, looks you're before not hitting, I launch it. You're not hitting save. So we're, th this is full no. auto save, auto everything. Uh, the beauty of Google. And, yes, and, it is. And there's undo also somewhere in here? Um, let me see. I'm trying to think where I had. Yeah, right up at the top. I was going to say, no, there is. So right up at the top. Now, can you, un um, can you unpublish? I'm just going through some random questions here. but So I haven't seen an unpublish. So yeah, like if you put in a version and then you're like, oh, no, I didn't mean to publish that. But I will tell you that unless you hit publish, the fact that it's auto-saving does not change the published version. So... I have made that mistake where I'm just assuming because it's auto saving that it's auto updating on the live page. But until I hit publish, so it's not. So this is publish something, mm -hmm. make a hundred thousand changes and then publish again. Again. Right. Oh, which I actually like. I just didn't realize um, that that have... was the way it was done. I like that because sometimes you're making changes. I would have never have thought that. And you're like, okay, well, I actually, I mean, I think about like when I'm using my WordPress site, I draft posts and stuff. So maybe if I wanted to draft something and I wasn't ready to make it go live, then I wouldn't publish it yet. But it's just something to be aware of because you have to change the um, the address. So when you, I mean, you have to you have to remember to hit publish, but. One of the things that I wanted to share is that when you hit publish, this is your choice. This is your menu. So it used to be that the name of the site was automatically the site address, but no, you actually say what the address is. And so, and here's something that I I, I want to make sure that we're clear about there. In the past, the URL for a Google site was literally global. You couldn't have the same thing. So if I wanted to do hashtag or you know forward slash teacher cast. I couldn't do that if you made a website with forward slash teacher cast. But when I'm looking at what your screen says, it says site address and then your school. That mm -hmm. now means that by domain, the, what the URL is individual, not just the global Google. Now, maybe it will be when they open it up to the public. Who knows? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought that this was actually the way the other sites worked that you could you could use a site name um, that it, you know, because you always on the, on the GAFE domain, you always had your school slash and then the name of the site. So you couldn't have two sites with the same name, which makes sense. Um, and you can, and just like with the previous sites, I can have it anyone in my domain or I can have it anyone on the web and I can choose whether it appears in search results or not. So anyone on the web would be that they would have to have the link um, to be able to navigate it, but I could also allow it to appear in search results. So. I think once this hits, this is a game changer. I think for, for us as tech coaches to, 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 I mean, literally you've been doing this for 15 minutes and you've shown me that, everything here is possible clearly we're at a point where there's a lot more that needs to get done but i'm looking at this going i don't need a website degree to figure out how this works and of course i'm looking at this going man i wish wordpress could be this easy now are there many things that google needs to do to add to this i hope so but i'm very very interested in seeing where all this is going you know um i well your overall thoughts seem very positive, right? I'm really excited because um, in the same way that I was super excited about Classroom, sure, it's not a full-blown LMS, but uh, any tool that teachers can get up and running in a matter of minutes and do and use independently and feel successful very quickly, I think is huge because um, you know, so many teachers want to be able to have a web presence. It's, it allows them to communicate easily with parents. And we want teachers to be able to do this within Google because it's free and it's sort of under that umbrella where we're hoping that teachers are using um, first document storage and all these other things. So I think that, you know, it's been a long time coming that sites has been kind of behind and and tired and it's just great to see them investing so much time and energy and 
in making this usable and user friendly because there were so many teachers that were going to other formats like Weebly, which become a problem because Weebly is one of the, you know, one of the most uh, common places for inappropriate content because it's so easy to create websites. So many school districts are blocking sites that were created through Weebly. So, you know, that's a frustration for teachers in the past. So the fact that these sites are creating with are created within the school domain, they're going to be available to teachers and free and, and super simple. So I love that. Jen, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. I know that there are several great places out there to learn about the new Google Sites. Where would you suggest we go if we were forward-thinking teachers that wanted to have a nice place to learn about the new Google Sites? So I, because I'm on vacation this week, it's not ready, but I'm actually in the process of developing a a new Google Sites cheat sheet. So it's a handout that has all of the menu screens and um, that will be published on my teachingforward.net site. And like all of my resources, it's uh, available for any teacher that's interested in in taking it and, and creating a copy, sharing it with colleagues. So um, I should have that out in the next week or so. Um, I haven't seen any like cheat sheets, but I'm sure that on a YouTube search, you can find some tours if you were unable to see some things. But again, just even in the past seven to 10 days, I've seen changes to this. So um, people are going to want to kind of keep keep an eye out there for um, how it's changing and evolving and try to get their domain administrators to um, request access so they can start tinkering because it's there's enough here now that you can build a site right and it is it is workable and you know I think I'm going to treat the new Google sites like like a, like a baseball card investment because a new version is coming out I'm gonna be selling all of my old cheat sheets for high dollar value and just to <laughs> see because they're going away they're now gonna be vintage cheat sheets mm. so Get them while they're hot. They're $18 per page now. And next week when they add new features to the new Google sites, I think it'll be like it'll $25 a page. I, exactly. <laughs> it'll up the value. I want to say thank you. Um, we have a few people that have been uh, patiently working with us here in our chat box. And, uh, you know, just before we sign off here one more time, I want to say thank you, Jen, for coming on, sharing all this with us. Thank you for being our co-host on here. We love it. Uh, next week, we're going to continue down this path, talking about websites, talking about different things. Um, if you are out there and are interested in beta testing something that I'm working on, uh, again, Jeff Ree, Bradbury.com, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y-B-R-A-D-B-U-R-Y.com. Would love to get any feedback on it. Um, of course, you can always reach out at feedback at teachercast.net. And most of the pages, I've embedded a speak pipe, so you can just leave me a voicemail. I'd love to get any feedback um, as I uh, continue down the pathway of designing our, my new homepage here. Really excited. This is not done on Google Sites. This is all done on WordPress, although there is a lot of Google magic and stuff in here. So um, I hope you guys have a chance to check this out. I know I put a lot into it. And I'm looking forward on Thursday. I'm doing two presentations for EdTech team. So this thing is going to be completely rocking out. Um, also, hope you guys have a chance to check out some of the great things going on. At the end of this week, applications close for the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program. Um, if you haven't heard about it, check it out. If you're a Microsoft 0365 school, um, it is something that you really need to do. It is an amazing organization. It is an amazing fraternity of, of people that are really, really um, focused on helping teachers help other teachers, kind of like the motto of what we're doing here at TeacherCast. So check out those last little things. Last week we did a whole show on MIEs, and this week here uh, we put out a top 10 list. There it is, um, on the top 10 reasons to be a Microsoft Innovative Educator. So there we are. I will st uh, do my little shot off here, Jen, by saying 60 months, five years, Millions and millions of millions, literally. I have stats on that one. Teachers, students, everything. Um, dozens of ed camps. Lots of ed camps supported. Lots of ed camps sponsored. Um, lots of ISTEs. Lots of 650 plus podcasts. Um, podcasting with everybody from Microsoft, Apple, Google, all the way down to the ed tech startups. I think my youngest podcast guest was eight. 
And uh, guys, if you're out there still listening to this show, I just want to say thank you very much. It's just the beginning. I walked around ISTE telling everybody this is literally the end of chapter one. And uh, I have some pretty awesome uh, announcements coming up. We're going to be working on relaunching what we called and loved to call TeacherCast University. Um, have some great things that we're going to be doing in the world of online courses. And we're also going to be working with several great ed tech companies. I can't mention anything right now until the ink clears. But um, lots of great content coming up over the summertime and into all of next school year. So thank you guys out there for supporting TeacherCast. Thank you for supporting my family. Thank you for supporting me and encouraging me to never sleep. So we did that entire show without Craig Yen. I, I don't know. That was the, this is the first reference of Craig Yen here. But anyway, we should let these wonderful people go. I have to say goodnight to my kids. On behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, you can, of course, reach out to us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave me a voicemail at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email me at feedback at TeacherCast.net. And please take a moment to go over to iTunes. Leave us a review. Leave us a rating. And subscribe to us on YouTube. Right now, we are looking at over 50... 300 YouTube subscribers, which is fantastic. Of course, we're broadcasting live on YouTube. We're broadcasting live on TeacherCast.tv. And uh, we're completing our first month over at Facebook. So we've been doing Facebook Live for the last little bit. So if you have a platform you'd like to see us broadcast from, please uh, take a moment and leave us some feedback on that. On behalf of everybody here, my name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much again for the last 60 months, five years. It is just the beginning. Until next time, keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students. Good night, everybody.